Welcome back, Sundays fams. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sunday fam? We're back with another episode review for episode 9, Cupid's Dagger. He's got a lot to say about it, so I'm going to let him start this review off. Yeah, I mean, I like to watch The Orville before I go to bed, you know. Get nice. That's rest your first mistake. What? Watching it before you go to bed. Well, you know, it gives me a nice restful sleep and I, I get nice dreams, you know. I like going to bed in a good mood. But I fell asleep. Like, I thought this well, episode was going to be like this Ed and Kelly show. And I, you know me, like, my Kelly meter blew up. Okay, it blew up. And I have no interest in any kind of episode that's focused on Kelly. I fell asleep. I woke up the next day and gave it another shot. I even watched it with my kids, and uh, they were even laughing with the episode uh, along with me. And so, uh, and that's that's what I mean when I say that was your first mistake when you watch it before you go to bed. Because sometimes you can put something on before you go to bed, and it might not have any impact on how you consume the episode or how you consume the show that you're watching. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you get home from work and you're a little bit tired. Things, things kind of come together in a way where if you watch something before you go to bed, you're just not 100% in there. And that's, that's why, that's why when you watch it again, you were kind of able to appreciate a little bit more, kind of mm -hmm. see the saving graces. And that's why it was your first mistake. Is to uh, kind of reserve these shows for, for kind of see. I have those shows too. Okay, those are those are the Fresh Princes of Bel Air, and those are the Family Matters that I I just put on for like white mm -hmm. noise to just fall asleep to. This isn't one of those shows that you can't you can do that, man. You gotta you gotta watch it. You gotta no no no. Gotta, I totally disagree with you. I like watching this before I go to bed because the stresses of work. You come back and you want to watch something that you enjoy. And The Orville has been something that I look forward to every week so that I can de-stress, decompress, laugh, enjoy, enjoy all of its elements. You can decompress, man. You can just, you know... I'm get not going to change my watching schedule get just a glass because of, I fell asleep on this one episode. Get a glass of wine, unwind on the couch, enjoy the episode. You know, it doesn't have to be right before you go to bed because you're going to fall asleep. And it might not even be all about that episode. It could just be that you're extremely it's all tired. all about the first half of this episode, apart from uh, Bordas trying to sing uh, the Titanic song, which that I was... That was a very funny moment. I was like, you will be silent! <laughs> that was yeah, that was so amazing. Yeah, I laughed uh, really I thought, hard on that uh, I think they've been um, teasing that for a while with Bordas... Uh, doing some kind of song, but uh, I don't think they've paid it off yet, and I don't, I don't know if they will uh, soon. Bordis is one of those characters that his humor kind of delivers on that on that dull side of the spectrum mm -hmm. where you don't expect that to happen because he's always, you know, 100% serious and he's he's very That's not not like. You That's know, what makes him like one of the most hilarious characters yeah. of the show. We have Rob Lowe as the blue ejaculating yes. Derulio. I didn't re I didn't realize he was Derulio in the first episode. Yeah. And so when I realized he was Rob Lowe in this episode, I had like these weird flashbacks to Wayne's world where Wayne and him mm, were kind of good having like a tug of war with uh, I forget what her name was. She was in the band, and she was the love interest, and he was the romantic rival. Oh, that's a good one. And, Memories. You know, you know, Rob Lowe, he's in that category of actors where he could very well be a vampire. We have uh, Keanu Reeves. We have Nicolas Cage. We have uh -huh. all these people who just don't seem to age. Yeah. It's John Stamos. And he always seems to play that romantic rival. And he seems to have the characteristics, or uh, the he's so handsome, he's so good looking that anybody can appreciate. arguably in he, that in that makeup yeah i mean <laughs> anybody makeup. can appreciate it like you can identify like he is a very good looking man um i'm i mean well <laughs> <laughs> um and i just want to see more yafit give me more yafit episode that was of weird yafit. it was really weird so anyway there is this kind of diplomatic war that's happening they get they get themselves uh, involved yeah in. i don't think that was the whole i i think i think it was it was good that it remained kind of like the ancillary plot to this episode because i think the whole episode was completely about derulio and yeah. uh, and the possibility that perhaps he has this pheromonic uh he's he's like he's 
spreading this pheromonic like cloud inside he's the ship. A pheromone. <laughs> he's a, he, he is a walking pheromone, and I actually I was actually laughing. His species, it's rude to uh, turn down to turn sex. down sex, which is a very interesting species. Though. Which is kind of dangerous because if you're a couple, mm -hmm. or if you're like a married couple, and you're around some of his species, and they're in heat. Oh yeah, that could be. Um, that's could kind be of like a dangerous. date rape drug almost. That's that's an interesting <laughs> yeah. analogy. Yeah, um, it's, it, stay away from whatever that race. Yeah, is. Yeah, whatever he is, stay away from. Or the if he's blue-headed ejaculator. Yeah, if he's ejaculating <laughs> through the face, don't you know? Just keep your distance from him. Yeah, I mean, like uh, the whole episode was was really focused on. Um, his uh, his ability, or his, he doesn't even his effect on the crew. His effect on the crew, and he's in heat. His race sometimes when they get in heat, they just like spread all these pheromones all over the place. And mm -hmm. if you get in contact with them, which was uh, Yathit with the flowers, he hands it to uh, Doctor Finn. And how weird was that scene with Doctor Finn and Yathit? That was super creepy. That was like ooey gooey jello sex. Green it also goblin. it's like one of those it's one of those weirds where you kind of like do a double take it's like you ever see like this this <laughs> ma you ever see this massive turd and you're just like whoa and you just can't stop staring at it and then you see a gelatin yeah. coitus action going on and you're a just a little like, coitus <laughs> and then you're just looking at it and you're like and she was she looked like she was having the time of her life in that mess <laughs> you know <laughs> Certain cracks and crevices can be reached. I don't know. Like, see, so yeah, it, it makes me, it makes, me, it throws me for a loop when I think about how that could actually happen. Yeah, I mean, um, and Ed just suddenly becomes this little schoolboy that's smitten with Derulio, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was laughing as uh, as Seth was he acting plays his that part. part well. Uh, he has this like technique when they were having drinks that you know you, he put his hand on him like slightly and then just proceeds and he, he uh, apparently plucked his eyebrows. Um, and uh, leading on to the to, to the uh, end of the episode where you get some really nice naked shots of Rob Lowe as Derulio being blocked by some really uh, really strategic placement of the camera and <laughs> objects. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that whole diplomatic plot obviously was ancillary to the whole issue with Derulio because at the end of the day, he he was the one mm -hmm. that sort of resolved the conflict with, with these two ambassadors falling for each other. Yeah. I think it worked. I think this was kind of like universe building in a sense. In the fact that they were trying to perhaps maybe plant or incept an idea where Derulio and Kelly might not have been a thing. Ned and Kelly's divorce could have been caused by the fact that he was in heat. And there, and there you, could be possibility that their romance could be uh, reignited. Yes, a redemption arc, so to speak. Ah, uh, please um, no. I don't. I don't really care. I don't, you, yeah, I don't care about that. You know, <laughs> you might not care. There might. There are some people who might care. No, but all none of that. You guys, let us know. Kelly is the uh, worst character in this show. And, all of his uh, wrong feelings you... aside, uh, you know, <laughs> I theorize that it is the case because both times he ejaculated out of the face, right? <laughs> yes. So that could be a symptom of being in heat. And oh come on! No, that's that's gotta be a symptom of just ejaculating. It just comes out of his forehead. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying it's a symptom like correlated to him being in heat, but there. But it's a good indicator of both times that him and Kelly were together. Okay. So both times they were together, he ejaculated from the face. So we don't know the physiology of his species, but it just it just kind of. But at the end, where Kelly asked him, "Were you in heat?" at that time we met and he kind of did a little pause and he says maybe i actually think that he wasn't in heat and it's all kelly's fault that this all happened that's my theory he was not in heat and kelly <laughs> i don't know i mean i thinking i'm thinking like the way everyone was was acting around him uh kind of makes me mm -hmm. think that that's the way it happened in the past and 
It, it could, that's it could be the case. Too. That's possible too. Uh, I'm going to give this episode three and a half out of five. I don't think it was, it was all that great, but it did kind of provide a background to why Kelly seemingly got with Derulia behind Ed's back. And, mm. and it sort of, even though it kind of sidelined the diplomatic um, proceedings for these two races, the Bruidians and the Varians, uh, I think it was overall about Derulio species and how it affects um, I agree. their, you yeah. know, everyone's yeah, pheromonal I would give it responses. <laughs> Emotional response to his pheromonic state. Yeah. Uh, I would give, I was going to give this episode a one or a one and a half out of five. But after watching it again and giving it a second chance, I give it a three. A three out of five. Not the best yeah. episode, not that great of an episode for me. I still I still uh, think that Krill was the best episode for me, followed by um, Majority Rules. It was just one of those kind of like episodes. You know, it's just there in, 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 in the season. episode, you know. No, it's just one of those episodes where it's just kind of there. Yeah. You know, and yeah, you yeah. kind of have to watch it and then like next week, oh... Next week's episode looks yes, incredible, yes. and I am super stoked for it because it looks like I think that one's gonna be it. It looks like Alara Katan has is front and center in this episode for for this like and she hasn't been really not it's really. Her, she's it's, been is it her kind turn. Of, who knows? It's gotta be her it turn. Look, it looks like she's in a lot of it. Yeah. Um, she's my favorite character in the show, and it looks like kind of like this horror, scary type of. Uh, episode and she's kind of yeah I just navigating. from looking just from looking at the previews here's here's what I think and maybe you can you can tell me what you think what what it might be but I think it's like this <laughs> this might sound stupid but I think it's some kind of life organism that has infected the ship and it's all playing in their heads no you know what you're right uh, it's very Star Trek I remember there was an episode in Star Trek I can't name it uh, by name. But there was a Star Trek episode where kind of they were infected by a species. It was an alien species. It made them kind of hysterical mm -hmm. and kind of made their uh, worst fears play out in their heads. And everyone was just like, there was there was some of the crew that obviously were immune to it, and they could see everyone kind of acting paranoid mm -hmm. and acting very very um, hallucinating and oh. it, it, it reminds me of one of those episodes and if that's how it plays out it's going to be a great episode awesome. and I cannot wait cool uh, my MVP we forgot to say MVPs uh, Yafit he finally got some <laughs> I'm going to seem a little bit biased here because she's my favorite but I think the MVP is going to be um, Alara because she kind of caught on to everything she right. caught she caught on to what was happening with the crew and she got she went and uh, confronted Derulio mm -hmm. and got everyone back into their places she she got the captain back into the conference room and she got everyone uh, to where they needed to be so that they could resolve this peacefully and uh, she's my MVP for that cool well way to go Yafit finally got some of Dr. Finn. Uh, and, and he's not going to like this, but my Kelly meter went up uh, this week. I think she did a great job. She played the schoolgirl crush type of kind of... The jealous... Yeah, the jealous yeah. girlfriend type. Yeah. Kind of kind of well, you know. Uh, we don't get to see her a lot in this series. And, and what we got to see of her, I thought she did a great job. There's only so much you can do when you're competing with Seth MacFarlane over a blue alien. Can't compete with uh, Seth MacFarlane over a blue alien. Yeah. My Kelly meter blew up and uh, I'm so glad that it wasn't I all think about we her. could put you down as a hater. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't don't Kelly hater. No more no more none of that. None of that. If you guys can help me out, tweet at Adrian Paliki and tell her that uh, Flip is a <sighs> hater. Uh and I think it's that's It's not I don't hate Adrian Paliki. Like I hate Kelly's character. I know, but we're going to push that narrative. <laughs> so I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode review. Yeah. Um, three out of three and a half out of five. Three out of three five. Three out of five. One of those episodes that's just kind of there. It's like a know? filler episode. Right, right, yeah. right. And we'll look forward to the next one. So until then, we will speak to you guys next week. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, Hit the like button somewhere around here and hit the subscribe button somewhere around this area. And if you want to see more of our videos, it's going to be up here around this area. Once again, my name is Flip. Thank you for visiting Watching Sundays and we'll see you next time.